One of Errol Spence's keys to success at inside fighting is his unique use of shoulder control. We often see control using gloves or using forearms, but very rarely do we see control using shoulders the way we see Errol Spence does. So we see Spence jabs his way into an inside fight, and physical control is important on the inside, and here we see Spence use his glove to control Algieri's head, which is one of the more common forms of control if not the most common. However, Algieri fights out of the control, and we see a left hand from Spence, then he immediately smothers making sure to pin Algieri's head and left hand in place using his shoulder. This is his use of shoulder control. Instead of continuing to shoot punches from where he is and risking getting countered, Spence is always seeking control on the inside to put himself at an advantageous position over his opponents to set up his next punch as well as protect himself from his opponent's punches. But how is this shoulder control going to set up his next punch? His right side is completely smothered, and you need space in order to punch. However, since his shoulder is controlling Algeri's left hand, and his left hand is controlling Algeri's right hand, he protects himself from Algeri attacking him, so he can do what he's about to do next, which is to use his huge bowling ball shoulder to push Algeri back to create space. Like I said, you need space to punch, and when on the inside, you could either move back or push your opponent back to create that space. Both methods have the same advantages, but this push has the added advantage of breaking Algeri's balance and forcing him to reset. And while he's resetting, Spence takes the opportunity to punch. In this example, we see Spence jabs with Garcia, and then he steps onto the inside to initiate the inside fight. And we know Spence always likes to set up a positional advantage, so we see he steps over to create space to punch with his left hand. And notice how he's also using his shoulder to control Garcia's left hand and his head as he does this. However, we see Danny Garcia does the right thing and steps with Spence to mitigate this left hand and then is able to return with a right hand of his own. You see, Danny Garcia did the right thing and adjusted his position by stepping with Spence in the same direction to mitigate that left hand. It, the punch still lands, but it would have done a lot more damage had he not adjusted, and even allowed him to land a follow-up punch of his own. So what will Spence do next here? So we see Spence throws one more right hand to the body, and then he immediately makes good use of those 3D delts of his, and goes straight into the shoulder control again. Because you see a lower level fighter might opt to continue trading punches where they were, but Spence excels at inside fighting because he's always looking to control his opponent or look for advantageous positions to move to. And just like against Algieri, Spence gives a slight shoulder push to create space for this left hand. Once again, Danny Garcia's balance is broken by the push and needs to step back to regain it. This gives Spence a window of time to throw a punch with less fear of a counter coming. So Spence kills two birds with one stone with his shoulder push. Comparatively, taking a step back to create that space doesn't have the added benefit of breaking your opponent's balance, and this is why Spence's Death Star Delt push is arguably a more effective tactic. And here again, Sean Porter, we see Errol Spence is going to step to his left to make space for his right hand to punch, then he steps back over and goes into shoulder control, and you notice that instead of continuing to throw punches, Spence goes straight into shoulder control, using his bowling ball shoulder to pin Porter's head, and using his forearm to pin Porter's glove. Since Porter is already on the ropes, Spence is going to create the space needed to punch by stepping his left foot over again, as you see. And then Spence uses that to throw a left hand, which unfortunately lands on Sean Porter's cock, and then before he's able to complain, Spence throws another left hand at his head. In this next sequence, we see Spence come in with jabs, and Ugas doesn't counter it with his own jab. As a matter of fact, he ducks down and braces for a body punch because he's so worried about Spence ducking down and shooting a body blow. And so Spence uses this opportunity to control Ugas while he's down there. So from the control, he lands an uppercut, and then Spence uses another shoulder wedge to pin Ugas' gloves into a high guard and positions himself in the way so that his head is on Ugas' right shoulder, which blocks Ugas' vision of his left hand, which is free to punch. The shoulder wedge also makes Spence's stance naturally bladed, which gives him the hip separation on his left side so that he has space to punch. Spence can actually throw anything with his left hand and Ugas won't be able to see it coming from here. 
From here, Ugas' only choice is to step back, or even better, step around to his left, away from Spence's left hand. Otherwise, he'll eat a left hand if he stays there, unless he guesses correctly, like the last time. However, Spence has already cut off Ugas' escape option to the left by stepping his own lead foot on the outside of Ugas' lead foot. This leaves Ugas no choice but to step back. And from here, Spence gives him another uppercut, beautifully set up. Want to bet on Errol Spence's next fight, which is hopefully against Terence Crawford? Use my BetUS affiliate link in the description for a free sign up bonus, which will also go towards helping out the channel. Thank you, BetUS, and thank you to my GOAT tier patrons for keeping the channel going Jason Mahinen, Grant Gabriel, Albert Chen, Jeff, Dmitry Drozdov, Andre, Gostala Geza, and Mark Price. I'll see you guys all in the next one.